what connected car will allow us to do is uh, first of all we can have direct access to you and second of all we can have a far more meaningful relationship with you what we believe in is the the future is a, is a combination of a number of uh, technologies that that's going to make mobility and cars interesting. Uh, one of them, of course, is, uh, is being connected. But uh, the other part is um, uh, to be more and more autonomous. Um, so more capabilities in terms of uh, uh, self-driving of cars. Uh, and, the, and the third one is uh, electrification. So what connectivity is going to enable us to do is to, if you combine it, by the way, sorry, if you combine it with uh, the, especially the, the, the autonomous investments and the um, electrification, I think then then it becomes really rich. No? So um, so yeah, yeah. our strategy is really to uh, to combine all three to to create a, a different mobility for the future. In the short term, uh, which we are already doing, and and by the way, all uh, car manufacturers are doing is to connect uh, vehicles uh, because in uh, whether that is in in production or with dongles or in in many ways to get a a relatively low level of functionality to to our consumers uh, you see many projects already uh, where you can uh, operate certain elements of your car we've had it for many years the, the leaf uh, as an example the electric car has been connected for the last six years and you, and you can basically uh, check uh, to what extent your car is charged you can stop and start the charging you can uh, uh, pre-warm your car uh, or put the air conditioning in your car before you enter in the car. So uh, there has been a lot of um, functionality um, uh, in connected cars that has been introduced over the over the last uh, over the last couple of years, and I think that's still that's still continuing. Uh, you now see more use of that in terms of um, uh, insurance companies, maintenance companies and ourselves to, to utilize that, that you don't have to pay the same insurance rate if your driving style is better than somebody else's driving style. Um, um, our, our vision is that that will keep on evolving. The question is what, what are the key uh, services that uh, people are, are looking for in the future? And, and I think that's not, not yet fully clear in the industry. As an automotive industry, we're moving much closer to what has already been happening in, uh, in electronics and phones, etc., with it in, in a world of continuous improvement, continuous upgrades, uh, and fast learning cycles. So um, we we put a lot of uh, services out there. You will you will uh, be able um, with all the data that you get, and all the learnings that you get, you will be able to analyze much faster what uh, what people are using and not using, and then you, you can update uh, your. Um, uh, your uh, connected services. So I think it will evolve. It will evolve very, uh, very fast in the, in the in the coming years. In in the short term, uh, we believe that um, uh, there is a lot of benefits in the basic functionalities uh, of your car uh, and those that have direct impact on uh, call it the the maintenance cycles and the cost of of operating your vehicle. Uh, this will move uh, into uh, getting more data from the outside world in, so the car will get more connected to the uh, overall mobility grid. Uh, and you now already start seeing uh, services where you can connect free parking spaces to uh, uh, to your car and to your navigation system. So everybody's now playing with those type of services. Uh, our belief is that um, the majority of connected car services uh, are going to be in the short term around those that have a real direct benefit to uh, to, to the experience that, that people have. And you're going to see a lot of very innovative, very clever ideas. Many of them are not going to work. Uh, some of them are going to work. And, and I think it's a bit the same as what happened in, in, in apps on phones and stuff. Not the, uh, You have many things out there and most people are only using three or four apps on their phone uh, on a regular basis yeah. and, and the rest never get used. It doesn't mean that the rest should not be created uh, because some people will use it, but it's a, it's a bit difficult, I think, to have a universal um, approach and say, well, this is what people want from connected car. Uh, the ability of connected cars is that we, we become an extension of your life. So the vehicle is the, the, the 
probably the main connected device that you will have in your in your life next to your phone. Uh, so there's going to be all the services you could possibly imagine on your phone are going to be related or integrated to your car. What connected car will allow us to do is, uh, I think, have two things. First of all, we can have direct access to you. And second of all, we can have a far more meaningful uh, relationship with you because we will know when your car needs a service. We will know uh, the, the type of things that you are interested in. We will know uh, how, you use, how you use your car, uh, what you use your car for, what are the places you go to, how many long trips do you do, how many short trips, how many uh, short commutes, what are the uh, most common places that, that you visit. Uh, now, and that obviously uh, allows us to, to create a much more meaningful relationship uh, uh, with you. Um, and uh, from a marketing point of view, that, that gets really interesting because we can get far more efficient in, in how we communicate with people because we don't have to send universal messages to, to mass audience. Uh, and I think from a consumer point of view, if we are very respectful and careful how we use it, uh, can be uh, a far more, a much richer uh, relationship. And, and, and the important part is, for me, is the second part, uh, is we have to make sure that we understand and we know what the customers want from us and from their connected car. The technology will move so fast, the amount of data is going to be so broad and so wide that technically anything is possible. Um, but you need to be very careful that you don't just create a maybe unpleasant relationship for consumers or people feel that you are intruding in their personal space. Um, so <laughs> Uh, you need to create a platform that is uh, allowing your consumers to do what they want to do in their life and in their driving experience in a better way. So we talk often about partnership. Uh, we believe we, we have a chance through connectivity and marketing to create a much better partnership. So if you want us to uh, help you uh, um, uh, make your car more efficient or look after your car better or make sure that you um, uh, do your services on time uh, or uh, you want us to, to, to recommend uh, places to visit, areas to go, or you will opt in and the tech we need to make sure that we are able to provide that connected service uh, uh, to you. The services that we do offer uh, need to be on an opt-in basis. We will of course propose, offer, make available, make people see what uh, what is possible, what is not possible. Uh, but we are not going to just uh, send uh, send I don't know advertising to the to the screen in your car. In the short term, by the way, what we're doing today, lots of workshops, lots of uh, focus groups, lots of input from uh, from consumers, uh, test uh, hypotheses, lots of kind of UX user experience uh, type type of uh, research studies. Uh, to get as much input as possible, uh, so that's happening. Uh, building the technology layer so that we are technically able to do, uh, uh, to have the cars connected and have all these uh, type of services. Uh, and then it's going to be a, a, a range of introductions of, uh, of services that, that people can uh, opt into. To be connected becomes a commodity. Uh, cars are connected. The question is, what, what do you do with it? And, and that's why I'm saying, for us, it's the integration of the elements. So if you have autonomous capability and connected car capability, and because of those two, uh, you can uh, assist your, uh, your drivers to, uh, to get to the locations where they want to get to uh, in, in the most convenient way, which means the car will figure out by itself where you can park, what the shortest route is. If there's traffic jam, you don't have to drive. You don't have to drive yourself. The car will drive. Uh, but if there's a winding road, you want to drive. You want to drive. Um, so, um, and then by the, uh, take it one step further. If the car is electric, uh, if you uh, uh, your preferences in the certain ways of charging, uh, interesting technologies there where you can also sell electricity from your car back to the grid. You get so, so there's so many individual possibilities happening. Uh, what for me the competitive advantage is going to be is those brands that uh, uh, are managing to create a, a combination of services that, that's most appealing 
uh, to people. And I think the fact that your car is connected in itself is to some extent a bit meaningless. And if used yeah. in the wrong way, actually a negative. There's going to be some unique uh, benefits. Um, uh, for example, the car industry, uh, all car companies were, made a lot of money out of navigation systems uh, and still today. Uh, but in the beginning, a lot of money out of a pure navigation system. That's become more and more difficult to make money out of a pure navigation system. But if you today have a navigation system integrated to uh, integrated with your audio system, integrated with uh, the fact that it's connected and integrated with um, uh, the the operation of the car, so, so the whole human machine interface, you got people very happy to pay. Um, uh, so I think the same is going to happen with connected. So in the beginning, we, we're going to have certain connected services that you can uh, charge for. You can charge monthly uh, contributions. You, you can have a once-off uh, payment at the top of purchase where people can can opt in and uh, and you make money. And then there's the other part, which uh, which for me is is uh, uh, really important. Um, the the, the future of mobility allows us to create far more consumer targeted offers. So today we we sell you a car and everybody to some extent, everybody can get the same car for the same price uh, with the same features. But maybe you don't want that type of a structure in terms of the way you, you buy your car. Uh, today we have uh, certain uh, ways of financing, um, you can lease a car, you can outright buy your car, you can finance your car. I, I think the, the, the options there are going to be much broader. Um, you, you will have different payment structures based on different usage uh, by, by consumers. Everybody is looking at uh, models for, for car sharing uh, as, as, another, as another example. Um, and, and for me, the, the, the car companies in the future, and that's the other thing we need to keep in mind, the, the revenue stream or the, the competitiveness of cars, um, some of it will change, but I don't think uh, what some people say, ah, but the future the cars are self-driving and they're all connected and uh, it's going to be a commodity, so how can a car company survive? I, and look, time will tell, but in, in our opinion, it, it's not going to change that fundamentally. And the reason we say that is uh, there is much more to a car than uh, moving from A to B. Um, uh, if it is only about uh, moving from A to B, then I guess even today you can virtually buy any car because they all go from A to B and they're all reliable. Um, so there is uh, a, a big element of the design of the concept of vehicle that you want, uh, the type of performance that you want, uh, that you want from a car. Um, there's also a, a discussion about uh, is ownership a, a big deal in the future? Do people still want ownership? And of course, the trends are moving. So uh, we, we, of course, are fully aware and, uh, and preparing for new ownership type of, uh, type of models. Uh, but that does not mean, uh, or that should not then uh, lead to an automatic conclusion that people say nobody wants to own a car anymore. Um, because uh, there is a, uh, in, in my view, a very emotional connection between uh, people and their cars, which goes beyond. We, we actually see, we see benefits. If you look at your life as, a, as an individual, there's four main uh, things that we can connect around. Uh, one is your house. Uh, everybody has their house where you live, you spend time with your family, with your people. And a lot of uh, investments and initiatives are being made around uh, and new innovations around making the living experience in your house more interesting, more appealing, the connected to the internet thing. Some, and it's a, to some extent a big story, some have very fast adoption and will stay. Some had adoption turned out to be gimmicky and will disappear. But people uh, are very interested to make their living space uh, as pleasant and as useful and as personal as possible. Uh, the second one, uh, I would say you see now a lot is your body. We all spend a lot of money on our clothes, on our uh, on our watches, on uh, whatever the hairdresser, the makeup, the the, the, the thing, uh, because we uh, and the gym, the uh, feeding fit, uh, and and more and more uh, technological innovations to make it better. We believe that the the third one is uh, is around your vehicle. Uh, again, we need to also be careful on on. on 
generic statements because somebody of 25 living in the middle of Tokyo uh, next to a underground station that takes them uh, within uh, seven minutes to uh, the office and the cost of a parking place is probably half his or her salaries is a very different person than somebody living uh, uh, 40 kilometers uh, uh, in the countryside outside of whatever Newcastle. Um, so, so we need to be careful to, to talk uh, generics. Uh, but in general, people uh, enjoy their cars, they spend a lot of money on their cars, they spend a lot of time in their cars, they, they commute a lot in their cars, uh, and they want their car to be an integrated part of their lives. So uh, if you now talk connected services and stuff, where is most of it coming from is that people don't want, uh, or they actually do want, they, they don't want a disconnect between my house, my body, my phone, my car. Um, so uh, what you see all these technological developments is that and that's what the connected car can do. Why can I not connect all of these? And by the way, the fourth one, because I want to talk about connection, the fourth one is probably uh, your your work. So what, what for us is, is, is a very fascinating, positive movement is that we are more and more able to make the vehicle and the transportation an integrated part of all of this. So you can, uh, you can have the heater in your house switch on when you whatever, leave the office in your car uh, because your car knows where you are going and can communicate with your house that you are coming uh, and you, you can do all that. You can have your car communicate with your schedule when you come late so that uh, you, you, can update, uh, uh, you can update your schedule. You can then automatically send a message to the people that you're going to that you're going to be a little bit late. And, and we feel that people want that integrated those benefits, seamless. seamless integrated things. And if we do that well, in combination with a attractive looking car with uh, uh, features that people are looking for, we don't see that this is now going to become a commodity. Uh, but look, time will tell, but we actually see this as a, as, a, as a very, very big positive for the industry.